This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 1462. Five Crucial Ways Dave Ramsey is Right About Money by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. And I'm your host and personal finance enthusiast, Diana Merriam. This is the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet, sometimes a little too enthusiastically. But I can't help it. Money is an incredible resource that we can use to craft the life of our dreams. So thanks for joining me today and every day. And before we get to it, if you've been listening for a while, you may already know that we have a weekly newsletter sharing tips, tricks, advice, inspirational quotes, and more. It's a great way to show your support and totally free. Just enter your email address at oldpodcast.com to join. But for now, let's get right to it and continue optimizing your life. Five Crucial Ways Dave Ramsey is Right About Money by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. You're listening to a personal finance blog right now, so you've probably heard of money expert Dave Ramsey. Dave has authored several books, teaches a popular course called Financial Peace University, which I highly recommend, and hosts the Dave Ramsey Show. I recently shared my thoughts on three ways Dave Ramsey is wrong about money. You can find that post titled Three Crucial Ways Dave Ramsey is Wrong About Money on my website, jenhayes.me. This quickly became one of my most controversial posts and it sparked more debate than any other article on the site. I do disagree with Dave on a few key points, but I love the vast majority of what he teaches. Reading his book, The Total Money Makeover, shifted my perspective and completely changed my life. Since reading that influential book a few years ago, I've paid off $127,000 of debt, bought a car with cash, and purchased my first home. I'm not sure where I'd be right now if my friend had never lent me a copy of Dave's book. I'm so incredibly grateful that she did. Here are five crucial ways Dave Ramsey is absolutely on the money, about money. Number one, cash is king. Quote, if you can't afford to pay cash for it, you can't afford it. Don't let monthly payments become a way of life. Dave Ramsey. Dave is strongly opposed to debt and encourages people to pay cash for everything instead, even expensive things like cars, college, and homes. No, Dave is okay with a 15-year mortgage on a home if you don't have enough saved to pay cash. This perspective is unusual in our society. Most of us are raised to believe that debt is a normal and necessary part of life. How many people do you know who have zero monthly debt payments? While it may seem crazy if you're used to debt, it is entirely possible to live a debt-free life and there are so many benefits of doing so. As Dave says, quote, you know what you can do when you don't have debt payments? Anything you want, end quote. The average American household carries nearly $2,000 in monthly debt obligations Between a mortgage, two car payments, student loans, credit card debt, and other forms of debt, it adds up quickly. Imagine if you had nearly $2,000 back in your budget every month. What could you do with that money if it wasn't going towards debt payments? Number two, debt is always bad. Dave is blunt about his views on debt. He does not distinguish between good debt and bad debt as many people do. I love this and completely agree. There was a time in my life when I thought that certain types of debt were necessary and that debt could be a useful tool. I no longer believe that. Student loans are not good debt. Debt is debt, period. Like Dave, I wouldn't tell someone not to buy a home with a mortgage because I realized that expecting everyone to buy a home with cash is unrealistic. However, I would not say a mortgage is good debt. It's better than other types of debt, sure, but that doesn't make it good. There's no such thing as good debt. Number three, a budget is crucial. Many people hate budgeting. I get it, budgets have a bad reputation. We think that they're restrictive and we don't wanna feel deprived. The funny thing is that's not really true. A budget doesn't take away your freedom, it gives you freedom. Why? For one, a budget gives you permission to spend. You don't need to feel guilty or concerned about your spending if it's accounted for in your budget. Another reason a budget is freeing is because you can tell your money where to go instead of wondering where it went. You don't have to be broke all the time. You can get control of your money and achieve your financial goals, whatever they may be. Invest ASAP. 
This is one area where Dave Ramsey receives a lot of criticism. While personal finance nerds agree that investing ASAP is important, many are skeptical about Dave's math. Dave says that if you follow his investing advice, you'll receive a 12% return on your investments. Many people think this rate of return is unrealistic. I didn't mention anything about investing in my post about why Dave Ramsey is wrong for one crucial reason. People are missing the point here. Dave Ramsey himself has said that even if you disagree with the 12% return, it doesn't matter. If he's half wrong and you get a 6% return, you'll still earn a lot more on your investments if you start early. The sooner, the better. That's the point. Start as soon as you can and you'll reap the benefits of compound interest over many years. The Joneses are broke. My favorite Dave Ramsey quote is, quote, live like no one else now so you can live like no one else later, end quote. If you do what other people are unwilling to do, working like crazy, being super frugal, living way below your means, you'll be able to live a life they'll never be able to live. While they're drowning in debt for many years to come, you'll be living your best life. What does your dream life look like? Do you want to travel the world, retire early, give generously, volunteer, work fewer hours, spend more time with your kids? You know what you can do when you don't have debt payments? Anything. You just listened to the post titled Five Crucial Ways Dave Ramsey is Right About Money by Jen Hayes of jenhayes.me. While there is some Dave Ramsey advice I disagree with, I can't ignore the fact that he has helped so many people get out of debt. I think the beautiful thing about Dave Ramsey's baby steps is that they're simple and easy to follow and most applicable for getting out of debt. Working your way out of debt is relatively straightforward and for me has been the most enjoyable part of my financial journey. The advice to live below your means, invest early, and stick to a budget is tried and true financial advice that applies to almost everyone. But I'm not sure I agree that everyone should pay off their mortgage as fast as possible. A big reason I'm not in a rush to pay off my mortgage is because I'm not comfortable with having a big percentage of my money locked up in an asset that isn't going to produce income for me in retirement. That assumes I want to live in my house and not sell it. If my net worth was a bit higher, I'd probably put more money into my house. I like the advice from my friend Frank Vasquez over at Risk Parity Radio, who recommends to have no more than 10 to 20% of your net worth in your residence so that you can put the bulk of your money into income producing assets. I had a listener reach out to me recently asking if I thought she had enough money to retire early. While she had over a million dollars, a large majority of that was in her house. So she couldn't really live off that in retirement unless she sold the house. So all that to say, mortgage debt really is a different animal than student loan or credit card debt. And I think a more useful way to look at it is firstly, how can I keep my housing costs way less than 30% of my take-home pay? This is to avoid becoming house poor. And secondly, how do I balance how much money I'm putting into my residence with the need for income-producing assets? And that should do it for today. Have a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you on the Friday show tomorrow, where your optimal life awaits.